I think the devastation have affected every single person and every single stone. Always uh, you can rebuild the stone. What, what's difficult is to rebuild the human being. One of the things is what happens to eye. You know, the type of explosion that's used, it just gives a lot, a lot of shrapnels. And for the eye, it's just enough, a very small shrapnel, just like a sand grain to go, penetrate the eye, and then you lost it forever. For children, we have much higher trauma. Uh, cases because of the continued conflicts and every day and every night. We are talking about three wars in five years, but even after the war finished, we are still having a higher rate of eye injuries because, you know, uh, internationally and worldwide, most of the injuries to the eye happens in, at home or at the working place. And now, where is home? Home is distracted. Instead of having the smooth wall and the floor and the ceiling, uh, now you have damage, you have rubble, you have uh, iron bars, uh, remnants of uh, destruction, with no electricity, neither at day or night. A, a very, very busy clinic in Gaza. It's crowded and it's doing a job which is uh, at least 10 times the estimated capacity uh, that uh, when it was designed. Uh, we have one of the highest uh, prevalences of diabetes mellitus. It's over 25% uh, are affected or uh, could be affected by diabetes and that the first organ that is hit by diabetes is the eye, is the retina. So we need to do screening for them, we need to do proper uh, laser when uh, we discover them, we need to do a retinal surgery. Uh, but I think we are confined in place, we confined in resources and in equipment and also in personnel. Uh, we need more manpower because if you talk about 25% of the population, uh, then we are talking roughly about half a million people. Uh, fortunately enough, uh, we have been uh, given a piece of uh, land in a very prime position in Gaza City. We started the building before uh, the war actually, and then uh, after the war, very early, once the hostilities stopped, we started building with whatever material we could have. The problem uh, is that you don't have enough material. There is a tight siege, 100% siege. Nothing comes in. So we are obliged to use what is available. But we, we didn't stop uh, not a single uh, day after the end. The contractor is working. It will be a hospital, not just a clinic. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, all what we need for the building, but of course, after the building, we need the equipment. We need to equip it with the uh, proper sort of things and utilities and instruments. And then we need to man it with, uh, of course, it will need the more manpower. We as uh, Palestinian people, we are very resilient. Out of the rubble, uh, you can see these children, uh, the elderly, are trying to get whatever can be utilized. I'm very, very proud to see that uh, in spite of all of the odds, we are still going. In Arabic, we have a proverb that says, uh, the dogs bark, but the caravan keeps going. And we have a lot of dogs barking, but we are going. There is no stop, we are not going to look back, we are going to keep going forward. These are our people, they need us and we have to be there to help them when they need us.